Hello and welcome back to Caribbean Online Learning. My name is Keisha Lewis and in this episode, I will be answering a CXC exam question on genetics and variation. This is the third and final video in this series. So, let's begin. For this episode, we are going to look at January 2015, question 5. And now for part A. Distinguish between genetic variation and environmental variation. Show the differences as well as show similarities. As we can see here, I just gave you the points that you should include in your writing. Genetic variation is the difference in genotypes between individuals. Different genotypes influence the range of characteristics in the phenotype. It can be passed down to offspring. Simply, it is variation based on whatever you have in your genes. Most characteristics are defined very strongly by your genes, and then there are some that aren't. The latter are also influenced by environmental factors, which brings us to environmental variation. This is due to the effect of environmental conditions on a particular individual. These conditions can either allow full expression of a genotype, for example, if you're properly nourished, and that allows you to reach your full height, or restrict its expression in the phenotype. Such types of variation cannot be passed on to offspring. Both types of variation have an effect on the organism's phenotype. They both are also influenced and limited by the individual's genetic combinations. For example, no matter how nourished a person may be, they will not grow beyond the height limit set by their genes. And now for part B. Here, we are being asked to classify characteristics, as listed below, that are caused by either genetics or by a combination of genetics and the environment. We are to list them in Table 2. This is how I set it up. Genetic effects entirely. There I have listed eye color, blood group, and natural hair color. The last one, femaleness, could be either, depending on what they really meant by that word. If it's femaleness in a biological sense, then yes, it is exclusively genetic. If it's femaleness from a cultural sense in terms of gender, it's both genetic and environmental. Obesity is of course due to both genes and environment. If your family tends to be overweight, you will also have a tendency to be overweight. However, you can counteract that by changing your diet, making sure you're active, etc. Agility, that's also partially genetic. Certain people have very flexible joints, etc. But just by doing stretches and other exercises regularly, you can increase your agility over time. Now, let's look at part C. The genetic disorder, cystic fibrosis, CF, is caused by a recessive allele represented by common C. The family tree in figure 6 shows the incidence of the disease over three generations. Let's take a closer look at this family tree represented here. So here's the family tree as represented by a pedigree chart. Let's look at the key. The unshaded square represents a normal male. The shaded square represents a male with CF. Unshaded circle is a normal female. And the shaded circle is a female with CF cystic fibrosis. Remember, this is not a sex-linked disease. So let's look at the generations. According to this chart, the first generation, the grandparents, are both normal. 
Now remember, this chart records phenotype in terms of whether the condition is present or not. A carrier status is not represented here. So we still don't know whether the normal individuals are also carriers. So as we continue, the grandparents are normal. The second generation, the parents, are Jack, Colin, and Sumintra. Jack is normal. Colin is normal. But Sumintra has the disease. She has cystic fibrosis. Now let's look at the third generation. We see that Sumintra's daughter has CF. Jack's son as well has the disease. Now as I stated before, cystic fibrosis is not sex linked. So either males or females have an equal chance of inheriting the genotype that causes the disease. Now let's take a look at the question that follows. Explain why the grandparents are most likely heterozygous. Well, they're heterozygous because Sumintra developed the disease, as we can see here. This means that her genotype would be a pair of recessive alleles. Being recessive, the disease-causing allele can be expressed only if the opposing allele was absent. Let's take a deeper look. First, I'll outline the symbols. Capital C is used to represent the normal allele. This also happens to be the dominant allele, hence the use of the capital form. Common C is used to represent the disease-causing allele, the gene that leads to cystic fibrosis. It is a recessive allele, hence the common form of the letter. Now for the possible combinations of these alleles, possible genotypes. Capital C, capital C, also known as homozygous dominant, is the genotype of a normal individual. Capital C, common C, also known as heterozygous, is the genotype for a carrier. Common C, common C, also known as homozygous recessive, is the genotype for an individual with the disease. Now this is Sumintra. Let's see how Sumintra gains these two recessive alleles. Now for her to have these two recessive alleles, one would have had to come from dad and one would have had to come from mom. Now according to the family tree, mom and dad, the grandparents, are both normal. But remember, that is just describing whether or not they have the disease. If they were each capable of passing a recessive allele on to Sumintra, that means that they each had one recessive allele and one dominant allele, making them heterozygous. So that is how we know that the grandparents were both heterozygous. This is my written answer. Sumintra developed the disease. This would have required her to receive two copies of the recessive allele. Each of those copies would have come from each of the grandparents. And last point, since they, the grandparents, did not show the disease, they were carriers, having one copy each of the recessive allele whose expression was suppressed by the dominant allele. That's C, part 1. Now let's look at C, part 2. Suggest the genotype of both Sumintra and her husband. Give reasons for your answer. Let's take a look at the family tree again. And we're back to our pedigree chart. We are now focusing on Sumintra and her husband. Sumintra has the disease so her genotype is definitely common C, common C. The husband, however, is normal. And as we saw with the grandparents, 
its genotype can either be capital C, capital C, homozygous dominant, or capital C, common C, heterozygous, and thus a carrier. So, which genotype does the husband have? That is what we now have to figure out. Let's look at the two possibilities, whether he is homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Homozygous dominant first. I'm doing a genetic cross with Sumantra's genotype by sketching a Punnett square. As we can see here, 100% of the offspring would be normal, but carriers. Now if the husband is heterozygous, meaning he himself is a carrier, what are the probabilities for his offspring with Sumintra? Once again, I am doing a genetic cross with my scrappy Punnett square. In this case, the ratio is 1 to 1. 50% to 50% probability of being normal but carriers versus developing the disease. And this is what we saw in the family tree. Their daughter developed the disease. This would only have been possible if the husband was heterozygous. So, the husband's genotype is not the homozygous option. It is the heterozygous option. Once again, let's look at the written answer. Sumantra's genotype is common C, common C. Her husband's is capital C, common C. Sumintra has the disease, which could only manifest if her genotype has two copies of the disease-causing recessive allele. Her husband does not have the disease, so he does not have the same genotype as Sumintra. One of their children has the disease, which requires a copy of the disease-causing allele from each parent. Therefore, her husband has to have one copy of that same allele thus making him a carrier. Hence, he is heterozygous. In this case, you can also add a genetic diagram like what we did just now. And this is the end of the question, as well as the end of the series of past paper questions about genetics and variation. I hope this video has been of help to you. If so, please subscribe and click the notification bell. Videos explaining topics in human and social biology, as well as cave biology, are coming soon, as well as more reviews of past paper questions. If there are any particular topics you would like me to cover, let me know in the comments or by sending me a message. So subscribe today and see you soon.